Hello, my name is Allison Roman. I am a waffle person, and today I'm making pancakes. Here's the reason I'm a waffle person, because they're objectively more fun. It's like a more fun shape, but also they have texture. There's crunchiness, there's like nooks and crannies for the maple syrup and the butter to get into, and a pancake classically is sort of more one note. It's soft. It doesn't really have much texture. Why would you pancake if you could waffle or even French toast or I don't know, like it's always to me been at like the bottom of the breakfast sweet foods category until I made this recipe. Crunchiness is of the utmost importance to me and pancakes are no exception. Even when they're doused in maple syrup, they should still have texture and these ones do. Let's get into it. You may notice that I haven't included anything like chocolate chips or blueberries or bananas or nuts. Before you get into mix-in territory, I feel like you should try the thing on its own because to me it's perfect and that's what makes a perfect pancake. It doesn't need fruit, it doesn't need chocolate, it doesn't need sprinkles. It just is perfect on its own and it's like crispy edged, buttery, eggy, sort of like maple syrup soaked pancake-ness. Pancake batter, two-part system. It's our dry ingredients and then it's our wet ingredients. And our dry ingredients are going to be two cups of flour, just using regular all-purpose, sugar, just regular granulated, one and a half teaspoons of both baking powder and baking soda. I like to use both leavenings here. Um, the baking soda will be activated by the buttermilk that we add and the baking powder will be activated by the heat that we cook them over. And I think that in a case like pancake where you really want that like sudden burst of of lift, it kind of is important like to have as much help as possible. And I've tried them with just baking powder and they just don't have enough lift. And same thing with the baking soda. And if by the time I added enough baking soda for them to have the lift that I wanted, you could kind of taste that baking soda flavor. So I use both and kosher salt. And this makes quite a few pancakes, but I kind of feel like if you're gonna make pancake batter, you should just go for it. All right, in this bowl, I'm gonna whisk the buttermilk and the eggs. So it's two eggs and two and a half cups of buttermilk. It's helpful if you whisk the eggs first in this bowl. Always shake your buttermilk. Sometimes the fat gets, it like can sink to the bottom. Dry ingredients, bowl A. Wet ingredients, bowl B. And as our final trick, I'm gonna melt some butter. Um, and because I don't wanna you know, dirty more than one skillet or pan. I'm just gonna melt the butter in the skillet that we're gonna cook our pancakes in. You can cook pancakes on a griddle, you can cook them in a nonstick skillet, you can cook them in a cast iron skillet. We're gonna use this little cutie cast iron. Because yes, we are gonna make one pancake at a time because guess what, it's just me here. <laughs> there is a room full of people here, actually. I'm sure you have gathered that. Hello. Um, you may notice that we're not in my kitchen. We're in my living room. This is the first time I've done this. This is probably the 28th take. Who's our, who's our advertiser? <sighs> Policy Genius. <laughs> Policy Genius is a marketplace that allows you to compare insurance quotes to find the best price and deal for you. If you're interested, you can go to policygenius.com backslash Allison, that's me, and get your free personalized quote. And because I'm not an actor, I just play one on home movies, but I don't. Um, I am going to read the legally bound materials that make it very clear what's going on here, which is an advertisement. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. You can save 50% or more in life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius, and you could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. If you're like, insurance, that feels overwhelming. Where do I even start? Policy Genius is going to help you get there. They're going to make it easy. They're going to make it simple. They'll spell it out for you. It's going to be great. We got to take care of the people that we love. I'm going to melt three tablespoons of butter in that skillet. I sort of understand from an eyeball perspective on how much that is. Pancake batter is not that fussy, but you do want to make sure that you don't overmix it. And in order to do that, it helps to combine your eggs and your buttermilk ahead of time, just so you're mixing in one thing rather than your eggs and then your buttermilk. And you know, this is one ingredient sort of to mix in. That butter is melted. So I kind of just start in the center like that. And then slowly 
incorporate from the edges. And it should be a little lumpy. Don't let the lumps fool you into thinking that your lump pancakes will somehow be lumpy. Well now, it like it's barely mixed together at this point, and that's when we're gonna add our butter. Perfect. So it does look thick like a cake batter. It holds a, a bit of a, of a ribbon, and that's pancake batter. You're like, okay, I got that part. What about making the pancakes? I feel like making the pancakes is actually the most complicated slash annoying slash difficult slash tricky part of the whole thing. That's why things like what you cook it in are so important. That's why I like cast iron or griddles because they retain uh, a very even heat and they keep that heat pretty consistent and there aren't that many hot spots. I'm sort of like a eat one pancake at a time as they come off the, the stove, kind of like latkes. Pancakes are really best eaten like the second they are made. So that's a cold hard truth. And I'm sorry that you had to hear it from me here. I'm gonna be cooking these over medium to medium high heat, by the way. And I say medium to medium high because there might be some heat that you may need to adjust. And any sort of uh, fat like coconut oil or ghee, which is clarified butter. But butter will uh, burn before you get a chance to actually cook your pancakes. Here we go with the first pancake, by the way. I'm gonna kill the heat because we need to talk about the first pancake for a second. The first pancake never turns out well for some reason. It's just like the pan is getting used to you. You're getting used to the pan. It's maybe a little burned. It's definitely misshapen. It's maybe too big, perhaps too small, undercooked on one side. Like it, you're just, you're dialing it in. It's a process. It's, it's like the first stage, right? And so metaphorically speaking, I feel like I first started thinking about the first pancake when I had gone through a breakup and was starting to date again and was sort of complaining that every date I went on, that was the first date was bad. And it was like, oh, it's the first pancake. Like, they're never gonna be that good. Like, is the batter, is it good enough to go on a second date? Is it good enough to continue with the batter? Like, sometimes you just gotta get the first date out of the way. Like, it's never gonna be the date. It's never gonna be like your best date. It's the first pancake. So we're gonna make a first pancake. I'm using a quarter cup measuring cup, just a portion. And this will tell us how big our pancakes are. But this is a good sign. It should be, you know, bubbling around the edges. It should start to set almost immediately. You don't wanna cook it too hot because what will happen is it will burn before the pancake has a chance to cook through. But if you take too long, then it'll kind of just like slowly spread out and become more like a crepe than a pancake. Ooh, we're getting there. So you can see how the bubbles are starting to form on the top of it as well. That's like a really good indicator that the heat is working and that's the pancake rising. I'm a Libra rising. I'm gonna flip this pancake. And you know what? It's not looking too bad. Sometimes they surprise you, these first pancakes. Woo. Okay, so here's what we're looking for, which is exactly what we got. That outer ring, that's gonna be really, really crispy and very, very delicious. And as we flipped it, we sort of get those like little puffy pocket parts that are like become really crispy and lacy at the edges. That's also what we want. And you don't need to add uh, fat when you flip it, but you will need to kind of, as you make the pancakes, like flip them occasionally. If you had a larger skillet and you wanted to make two or three at a time, you could definitely do that. Just be careful of hot spots because I find what ends up happening is that the center gets much hotter than the outside of the skillet, even when using a cast iron. So when you make the pancake, it's like done on half of it, the side and not on the other. So I think our heat was a little hot, but we're going to try it. We're going to test it anyway. Mm. It's really good though. The whole concept of the first pancake is really a chef's treat. Chef's treat is a first pancake. First pancake is a chef's treat. It's like the first pancake is never for you. It's always for me. You know what I mean? Or you, it's never, for me. it's never for me. It's always for you. And I think there's enough butter in the batter itself and you're cooking it in enough fat that it doesn't really need any on top, but that's just me. It's a really good pancake. Here's what we learned from our first pancake. We learned the first pancake can be as delicious as the other pancakes. Um, as evidenced by the fact that I'm continuing to eat it. We learned that maybe my skillet was too hot. I need to turn it down. I learned that. I think I nailed the size. But because we're going one at a time, I can maybe make them a slightly bigger. It's so crunchy. 
The crunchiness comes from the fact that I'm using a cast iron skillet, the fact that I'm cooking it in fat and I'm not using like nonstick spray in a nonstick skillet. You don't need a ton of fat to cook it in. You're just, it's like, it's like half a teaspoon. How to tell when your pancake is done and ready to flip. You will notice it start to get really tall and it'll look like it has like a strong foundation beneath it. But you'll also notice a lot of bubbles start to form both around the sides and on top of the pancake. And that's the indication that the leavening is working, right? It's, it's rising, it's releasing gas, that's where the bubbles come from. All right, this is almost ready to flip too. So if you wanna come in closer, see how the edges, you can like pick, pick it up and you can peek at it. But you basically want it to be mostly cooked through on the first side. I'm flipping. Oh, considerably better than that first pancake though, I gotta say. You can just tell. It's like not as dark around the edges. It, I let it go for longer on the one side. I think the thing with pancakes and what I learned when I was testing this recipe again and again and again and again and again is that pancakes actually take a lot of patience and they cook a lot slower than you think. My instinct for most things is to like hot and fast and get it done and I want it now. And pancakes don't work that way. Pancakes, you gotta like, you gotta give them time. They gotta like come into their own. They gotta get used to the skillet. The skillet's gotta get used to them. You have to like, let it fully bake in the skillet. It's scary. You're like, why isn't it happening faster? It's like, well, it'll happen. Just give it a second. It's happening. Oh, look at that puffiness. Give it to me. You may notice that I'm not using like a silicone spatula. I'm using a fish spatula. I use this for almost everything. I use this for like most flippies, um, whether or not I'm like, searing fish in a skillet or like tossing vegetables on a sheet pan or flipping pancakes. This is the tool that I'm using. I find it indispensable. I reach for it as often as a wooden spoon or my tongs. I love my fish spatula. The thing about pancakes is like, if you're eating pancakes for breakfast, you don't need a stack of pancakes. Like that is an insane story we have told ourselves. Like in an ad for pancakes, it's always like six pancakes as a serving. I can, I can eat one pancake and be like, I'm all set. I don't, nothing about this makes me want a stack of them on top of each other. Like, it's crazy. It's a cake made in a pan. Also the fact that we eat this for breakfast. Anyway. What about Dennis, do you have a child? You have two children? Oh my God. Wow, I did not know this. Um, well, I would make Dennis's kids Mickey Mouse pancakes, I guess. I feel like if you're an adult and you're asking me for that, again, we gotta talk. What's the deal? What's going on with you? <laughs> Why do you need a mouse-shaped pancake? They don't care for the shapes. They just want the pancake. They just want the pancake. Yeah, your kids are adults, we get it. Yeah, they, when? Want, they, want, they want the little ones though, they want. Oh, they want silver dollar. Yeah. Let's see if I can make Dennis's children some <laughs> small pancakes. These oh, are getting cute. Yeah. You know what's crazy about a pancake? Even when you put it in and you're like, mm, it's not a circle, they somehow find their way to a circle. Life. Life. Pancakes have a lot to teach us about patience, about life, about trust. These are cute. Okay, I like a tiny mm -hmm. pancake. I'm not gonna make these this size for me, a 35 year old woman, but for Dennis's kids, I'll do anything. <laughs> In conclusion, don't be discouraged by the first pancake and, and just know that like each skillet and each stove and each batter and each day are different. And if you have to make a few pancakes to like nail it and get into your groove, then do that. I feel like allowing yourself the space and time to like get the rhythm going, then that's what you need to do. Dial it in and then go forth and make all the pancakes in the world, big, small, whatever you like. These are cute. Oh my gosh, cute. They are cute. These are so cute. So cute.